I'm Jackie Doucette, and I'm on a mission to discover exactly what life is like beyond retirement. Join me while I chat with people who've already done it, who've retired to something rather than from something. Let's find out together exactly what's waiting for us when we say goodbye to that nine to five. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Beyond Retirement. Today, I'm really excited to have John Lefebvre with me. John's done a lot of things. He has retired from practicing law, which I guess qualifies him for this show. He hit uh, hit the big time in the dot-com world with a platform for online gambling, and he ended up uh, getting arrested for that same business. But it's what he's done since then that's really brought him into the limelight. He's an author, a musician, an environmental and social activist, and a philanthropist. In his own words, lots of people get rich, but sad few pass it along. He now focuses on the responsibilities of freedom. John, thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure, Jackie. Thanks so much for having me. Now, I'm really excited to talk with you, and I think um, probably more than a few people would be drawn into your story about you know making it rich and ending up in jail and or being <laughs> arrested. And I'm not sure whether you want to talk about that or not, but I, I want you to just kind of give us a little bit of your history, where you and where you started from, and how you ended up where you are right now. Uh, my mom was born in Calgary in uh, the late 20s, and uh, she, didn't, uh, she didn't invite me to disclose to her age. She's, <laughs> she's no longer with us. She married a soldier from uh, northern Ontario. He, he was raised in the Sudbury Espinola area. Um, and uh, my dad uh, uh, and, and she had three children. I was the middle one. In 1955, my, my father died in an automobile mishap. And um, my mom uh, was widowed with three children, five, three, and one. We moved back to Calgary um, and uh, she raised us there. Uh, She um, uh, was one of the first, uh, uh, she she enrolled in the second year at the University of Calgary. Uh, University of Calgary started, it was called the University of Alberta at Calgary, UAC. And then after a couple of years, it became U of C. But my mom was a UAC graduate and, and taught school. She taught English at the, uh, at this, uh, the high school in Calgary. And um, eventually she returned to um, uh, uh, graduate school and um, became a counselor and, and, and uh, was a high school guidance counselor until she retired, uh, you know, in the late 80s. And um, during that time, she uh, she was a great um, you know she was a great mentor to us as well as being you know a friend and a lovely mom. But uh, all you know all of the kids we went to school with thought, thought she was the greatest person they'd ever met in their life, and you know my <laughs> they 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 didn't have to deal with her in the, you know the intimate situations that, for instance, my sister had to deal with her in. And <laughs> you know Irish Catholic moms, you know they're a little bit uh, they they have their responsibilities and they they're quite stern about them sometimes and so you know mom didn't fall short in that department but no she she introduced us to very um, amazing people she was um, you know father pat o'burn his brother eventually became a bishop in calgary was a good friend of our families and we hung out with father pat and uh, you know he there was lots of uh, you know kind of elevated theology and stuff being spoken about at home and that included a lot of stuff about kindness quite properly you know um I'm, uh, I no longer hold myself out as being a practicing Catholic, but I do say that um, the, uh, the basis of my morality is definitely uh, consistent with what uh, we're told Jesus taught. <laughs> Coincidentally, Jesus and I agree on, agree on just about everything. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so anyways, uh, I, I went to, you know, I went to school, I went to university, I became a lawyer when I was a little, little bit older, around 27 or 28 or something like that, and practiced law for a few years. Um, I never really was that thrilled with the practice of law myself. Many of my friends had really re- rewarding careers, but mine was, um, and mine was rewarding in some ways, but not in the ways that really mattered uh, to me. Um, and a business to opportunity presented itself, though, through law. I met Steve Lawrence, who had this idea that um, 
Um, if somebody brought some professionalism, responsibility, reliability to the online money transfer part of online gaming, online gambling, that that would be a good little business model. And this young kid that worked for him at the time, 16 year old said, yeah, and we can do it on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we started something that wound up being kind of like PayPal for online gambling. And uh, it was huge. It was huge. It was, uh, we added a, a whole bunch of, um, efficiency to the to the system and um uh it worked very very well uh, we went public on the london stock exchange achieved the market cap of around two billion dollars at one point wow. um and then eventually um uncle sam put up his hand and said wait a minute that's off that's offshore gambling isn't it i don't think yeah so so we were arrested and um you know for about seven years i was out on bail of five million dollars uh wow and, we negotiated, uh, you know, we, we, we negotiated guilty pleas, plea bargaining, as it, as it were. Um, you know, at first they were charging three 20-year offenses. Uh, there was um, conspiracy, money laundering, and racketeering are the three general categories. Uh, and eventually we, I wound up ple pleading guilty to a lesser offense, um, uh, promoting, promoting illegal gambling, which was a maximum five-year offense. I wound up being sentenced to 45 days. It was one of the most interesting 45 days of my life in, in Manhattan, <laughs> in prison. And, um, uh, and uh, you know, wound up pretty much on the beach after that. You know, it was, uh, I wound up paying, between my partner and I, we paid a $100 million uh, forfeiture and our company paid a $140 million forfeiture. So between uh, the three of us, we paid uh, Uncle Sam uh, $240 million, a quarter of a billion dollars forfeiture. And um, at the time, uh, Jackie, they, they were, uh, you know, tied up in Iran, or sorry, in Iraq. And uh, they, I think they were saying that at the time they were um, spending about two and a half billion dollars a week in Iraq. So I calculated the dark quarter of a billion dollars would have taken us to about, you know, coffee time Monday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, uh, I, I wound up, I, you know, I wound up, uh, uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't had a, a, a job since then. I haven't had to work since then. But uh, during that time, my friend Jim Hogan from high school is a very, uh, com um, He's a very uh, accomplished PR guy here in the West Coast in Vancouver. And uh, Jim was the, uh, became the uh, chairman of the board of the David Suzuki Foundation. And he introduced me to David and uh, I've been working with David ever since. I'm, I'm now a founding director of the David Suzuki Institute. So we, we're, we're doing, uh, I can talk to you about the difference between the, the other. Um, Jim also introduced me to a fellow named um, Victor Chan who is a, a friend of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And so I, I, we met Dalai Lama a, a three or four times. I had an audience with him. I, he invited me to bring anybody I wanted. So I brought my mom. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <clears throat> and we had about 15 minutes with him. I don't know if you know this name, but the, the person who was waiting in the wings to have an audience right after my mom and I was Jason Kenny. Do you remember J Jason is a premier in Alberta now and he's 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 quite a he's quite a wing nut. Um, oh interesting. Yeah and he um and he but he at the time was uh, um a uh, I think minister of foreign affairs for the uh, Harper government and uh they at the time they were uh, trying to annoy the communists of the world particularly the communist Chinese and one of the ways they could annoy him was by making his holiness a Canadian citizen so that's what they did. <laughs> 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 and so we were, I met uh, in two days, I met uh, in one day, in one half an hour, I met not only uh, His Holiness of Dalai Lama, but also Jason Kenny. <laughs> I, think I won't can, ask which was more interesting. <laughs> no, I think you can hear the irony in my voice, can't you? Yes. <laughs> Anyways, um, I became very interested in, um, you know, in environmental affairs and, uh, and of course, with knowing David, uh, David's, uh, that, was, that was a wonderful experience hanging with him, still is. And uh, we started, the Dalai Lama doesn't lend himself to his name too much, but he did lend himself, uh, he, he did allow Vicar to start uh, an institution in Vancouver called the Dalai Lama Center for Peace and Education. And the Very main, nice. And the main, um, the, the slug line of that is education of the heart. 
you know, on his uh, holiday, the Dalai Lama's idea, I think, you know, is that, um, you know, if we, if we teach people how to unfold their hearts, particularly children, then they become much more successful human beings in almost every way. So that's uh, one of the things. I was a founding funder of the Dalai Lama Inst uh, Center for uh, Peace and Education in Vancouver. And did a number of things like that. I'm still I'm still involved in a number of things like that. My friend Jim says, "You may be retired, John, but for a retired guy, it's not that easy to get you on the phone." <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'm very lucky I've got you here. <laughs> it's my pleasure for sure. I've been going on quite a bit here, Jackie. I you know, please uh, jump in and you know, let me let me know where you want to go with any of that. Um. Well, I'm I'm fascinated to know where you've gone with the idea of being a, an environmental activist, a social activist. Uh, I know you're doing some uh, philanthropy. You're doing a lot of different things. You've just mentioned the, your, the Dalai Lama Center. Tell me what you're doing in your, in your day-to-day -day life um, because retirement is obviously a busy time for you. Sure, sure. Well, I've, I've, I've written two books. One of them uh, with Carrie Gold uh, um, is a, uh, sort of, I, I think of it as some the more tawdry tale, the tale of my life, the, the rags to riches. It's, uh, it's called Good With Money, uh, Good With Money. And the slug line is, a rich guy's guide to gaining everything by losing it all. <laughs> <laughs> they call it Good With Money because um, uh, my closest advisors uh, uh, all, all said to Kerry, he's not good with money. <laughs> <laughs> and, she, and she quite smartly said, whoa, that's a good title. <laughs> and so we uh, spent a couple of years working on that book. I've written my own book called um, All's Well, Where Thou Art, Earth and Why. And that's, uh, I, th I think you've had a glance at it. It's a bit more audacious. I, I think it's a more important thing, but uh, um, it's not nearly as uh, tawdry as good with money, <laughs> which is <maybe> <laughs> great. Story, the story of my life, sort of, I gave it to you in a nutshell. Um, but now, one of the things I'm doing that I really love is uh, um, I'm uh, all's well. I'm um, using some of this gear. You saw me wrestling with it a little while ago. Um, I'm re actually reading the, for the audiobook myself. I've got some, uh, some technical guys teaching, you know, once again, I've done some recording, so I know a little bit about how, how you know, garage band works and all sorts of things. <laughs> Um, I'm on about, I'm, I've, I've, I've read now the sixth chapter and the four chapters to go. And, uh, and so that will st soon come out on, a, on an audio book. Um, and uh, that's been a wonderful experience for me to go back and review my writing and try to say it out loud has been, uh, you know, has been really great. I've also got um, a bunch of music that I made when I was out on bail in Los Angeles. It so happened that there were some really good recording studios in the vicinity. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a couple of bucks and I was introduced to a guy, Brian Ahern. Uh, Brian uh, is a Canadian guy. When we were kids in Canada, there was a thing on CBC TV called Sing Along Jubilee. I don't know if you remember that, but it was I a, do. it was the successor of the, uh, um, what the heck was that guy's name? Um, Oh, it doesn't matter. It was the Sunday night CB, Don Messer. Don, yeah. But, yeah. And Brian ran the, the band for the Sing Along Jubilee. And then one night, this lady, young lady came on and she sang, she was wearing a white sheepskin vest and she sang the song Snowbird. And Brian goes, that's a pretty good song. We should go to Toronto and make a record of that. <laughs> <laughs> and he did. And then Brian produced, I think, 15 albums for Anne Murray. And uh, when he was in Los Angeles, he met... Um, a lady, young lady by the name of uh, Emmy Lou Harris and married oh. her. And, and uh, married her, wow. <laughs> right, and uh, they, they, have a, they have a child and um, uh, they're, no, they're no longer together, but uh, she, you know, he did about 14 records for her as well. And he's recorded for Johnny Cash and George Jones and a bunch of the Nashville guys. I ran into Brian and he said, you know, John, I think I could do something with your music. <laughs> 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 and, then, and then he... Uh, uh, you know, he, he introduced me to some guys, we, you know, it's the, the, the best studio musicians really in the world who were available. I, I could afford them, fortunately, at the time. And um, 
you know, you can kick in the door with money down there, but you don't keep those guys around long unless there's something that's of interest to them. But they, they exactly. stuck around, you know, and they even came back for a second. So long and short of it, I recorded over those five years I was out on bail, I recorded two double CDs of music. Um, and uh, that was 10 years ago. Uh, but just recently, you asked what I've been doing. And well, I've kind of come up to uh, contemporary times now. Jackie by kind of remixing all of that music and now it's all up there on those streaming things you know if you oh, want wow. Apple Music or Spotify or any one of those and go John Lefebvre uh, if you spell it right if you spell it right <laughs> J-O-H-N yeah. so really what I've been doing over the last couple of years of COVID and whatnot has been um, you know taking advantage of the time to uh, bring my uh, the, you know my you know, ooh, whatever my accomplishments, my songs and my writing out to uh, in, into the you know into the modern theater, you know the modern. So that's that's been wonderful. My most important thing in my leisure, though, is to find leisure, to find time off, and you know, and I I, I was listening to um, I, I I really liked uh, listening to Mary McCart McCartney the other day. We were I, I was listening to it, and then in, even this morning they talked, but the uh, Diana Place was talking to us about third act and she was saying that um, how uh, making plans you know a three-year plan and a five-year plan in retirement and um, and th those are really important things to do in our society I think because most most of us have spent our life in a society where um, we're in a business or a profession or some sort of a job where uh, you know things are charted out for us and and we when we sort of do them in order and and I and and I really encourage people to, to 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 do that too. But there's one other thing I'd like to encourage people to do, and that is nothing. <laughs> one of the for for me, um, one of the, one of the things I I sorry, I've come to think, Jackie, is that we we get all this noise in our heads that comes to us. It's about to build taxes, you know, whether we get a bank, you know, groceries, you know, all of, all of the things that we do day to day. Uh, what what our daughter said, you know, what some friend said, you know, what do we got to go for some, you know, what are we going to do when George comes over this weekend? All of this static happens. And it's really important, I think, for us, Jackie, to just establish office hours for ourselves. And what I mean by that is, you know, all of these ideas that keep coming into our mind, whatever they are, sometimes we have to treat them as if they're uninvited guests. They're people who've showed up without phoning first. They're, they're clients without an appointment who are knocking on the door and say, no, not right now. And the reason that's important is because within us, there's this incredibly creative thing. It's like magical. It's the thing, the part of us that dreams the part of us that dreams doesn't go to sleep in the daytime. <laughs> the part of us that dreams is still there. It's the part of us that is creative in all the different ways, cert certainly artistic ways, but everything else, creative ways of, of solving things, creative ways of moving, creative ways of, you know, that part of us is still alive all day long. And when some, you know, bill payment, grocery store, social engagement, I've got to go get my new runners to go running today, oh, you know, those things interfere, they interrupt. So I think what it's really important for me to do is to treat them with the respect they deserve for at least a half an hour a day. Some people might call it meditating, but for me, it's just get still and see what comes up because this magic thing within us, all of the greatest ideas I've ever had, Jackie, have come to me, not, not, not when I was sitting with my pencil and trying to you know, <laughs> but when I was chopping wood or when I was like walking through the forest or, you know, when I doing things with, you know, uh, when, when, when leisure sort of forced upon us in a sense, you know, those are, and those are, and those are the most critical things. And it's a wonderful, wonderful gift that we have this, this part of us that dreams in the night and, and imagines in the daytime of all the creatures in the universe, you know, we are the ones who can dream and then wake up and take those dreams and bring them to reality. And that's magical. 
that's truly magical. All of the other animals, as glorious as they are on earth, they can't do that. You know, they might be able to listen to each other sing those songs, the beautiful songs that the whales make. They might even be able to entertain each other and enjoy it and love each other for doing that. But you know, we know how to write down ninth symphonies and make them so everybody can listen to them and learn them and play them themselves on their own instrument. And, you know, we know we, we, have, this, we have this other capacity, consciousness, and it's miraculous. And when we allow our consciousness to be filled up with uninvited guests, we do ourselves <laughs> a disservice. So there's my pitch. You know, in my book, the way I say it is, be still yet still be. Well, that's beautiful. And I think you answered all my questions before I had to give any of them. That, I think that's, <laughs> that's a brilliant uh, dissertation, I guess, because it's so important and we don't do that nearly enough. We don't say no to the things that clutter our mind. We don't say no to the people that knock on our interior door. Um, and we can't be ourselves. We can't give the most that we are to other people until we're quiet enough to actually know who we are. That's exactly right. And we owe it to all those people as well as ourselves to, uh, to, to nurture that, to, to nurture that person, that, that, that wonderful person that, that we all actually are. And so, yeah, no. And I think that one of, one of the things I, my, my wife, Hillary has, a, a, she's, a, she's a wonderful, very, very patient woman. <laughs> she, she has two children and I have one. But one of the things I said to Hillary once, Jackie, is that there are three children who are fallen under your charge. There, there are your two kids and there's the one in the mirror. And they all are entitled to the same encouragement, the same love, the same slack, cut them some slack, cut them, you know, the same discipline, you know, the same love. All of them are, are entitled to the same amount of your time. <laughs> and that's so true. And it's it's so sad that so many people don't do that. We, we don't value ourselves the same way that we value other things. And I, I think if we could not value the other things quite so much and value ourselves and what we have to offer, I think we'd all be better off. Yeah, I think we, I think we may value the other things as much, but not so often. We have to, <laughs> we have to value them, but sometimes value the one in the mirror as well, right? Yeah. And then yeah. and because because we're a treasure, I, we we only have to think for a moment how wonderful our mothers were, right? Yeah. So, and then understand, well, wait a minute, I'm one of them too. <laughs> I know this sounds funny, a man saying these things, but you know, it's a, we are, um, you know, it's a, it's a, we're, we're in a funny age now, aren't we? And, you know, I was, I was reading this morning, the, um, the Declaration of Independence, all men are created equal. It's funny, we used to call people men, quaintly, yeah. we used to call people men. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and there are some assumptions in, in, in that too that <laughs> but um, no, we are all persons. All persons are created equal. And, uh, and, and, and one of the and, you know one of the things I say at the beginning of my book, All's well where art, or thou art earth and why is you know that of all of the things that fell into my lap, the thing that is the most precious, that has fallen into my lap has fallen into mine no more than it has fallen into anybody's and that is just this ability to like be to dream to think to to love right there yeah there i said it out loud <laughs> i know that's not very masculine <laughs> but it's true and we all have that same ability that same opportunity but we're not all allowed to have it for some reason it would seem right so i would encourage people to um get in touch with that part of ourselves and and the other thing i would encourage is you know and it's good to you know it's, it's good to pay attention to the things that come into our minds because they, but a lot of them are responsibilities right 
And so, we, you know, we can't, we can't disrespect our responsibilities, but we have a responsibility to ourselves too. And one of the ways I've sort of captivated this re responsibility for myself is the best days of my life now, that, you know, leisure is hard for me to arrange, but I do arrange it now. But the best days of my life now, Jackie, are the days when I decide today's the day. And what does that mean? Today's the day I'm going to do exactly what I would do if I was skipping school. I might go shoot some arrows. I might go for a hike. I might go just sit in the park and smoke a cigarette. Well, we don't smoke cigarettes anymore, but we might, we might smoke something. <laughs> but, you know, absolutely just do whatever the moment calls out for us to do. It might even be doing some carpentry. It might even be doing some gardening. But, you know, the, the, these, the, the, these, these moments are our real treasures. So, you know, if, if I can encourage people to let those things loose, you know, go ahead and make some plans and even fulfill them if you want. I don't care. But at least take some time to do the things that we love. That's all. It's, yeah. And I think that for me, that's the, the whole definition of retirement is having the opportunity to do the things you want to do when you want to do them. That's the treasure. And that, yes, yeah. that's, that's the treasure. And so and at least some of the time we should spend a little of that treasure on ourselves. Exactly. exactly. And I think finding time to be bored or do nothing is important too, because that's when you find out who you really are and can you live with yourself? And can, can you live your, with yourself with the phone over there somewhere? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I'm, I'm a big proponent of cell phones, though. Don't don't get me wrong. I don't I don't. Um, when I see a kid with a cell phone, Jackie, I'm not sure they might be reading James Joyce. We don't know could that. Be. Could be. <laughs> Probably not, but could be. A friend of mine uh, has some uh, work he does in Malawi. And um, he told me the story in Malawi. There's a fellow who um, this was a few years ago now, so it's probably outdated. But he had one Apple iPhone or whatever they, whatever they were at the time. And he had this little shop. And that in Malawi was uh, a, uh, an internet cafe. People would come and, you know, they would get the phone for 15 minutes and they would, you know, use his phone for, <laughs> and they would, you know, bring him a little bit of money or, you know, a chicken or whatever. And, you know, there's, there's so much that we can do for the world and so much, um, so much capacity now to bring um, learning and uh, you know dignity to people everywhere. Uh, our, you know our our plate should be full for the next three generations. Just making sure that everybody in the world has the same things that you and I take for granted as being our entitlement, and we should take them for granted as being entitlements. But we should also make sure other people can too. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's a great. Yeah, that's a great plan. I think to yeah. enjoy your retirement by making sure other people can enjoy it too. That's a wonderful, yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Well said. Yeah. Well, thank you, John. I've really enjoyed chatting with you. Um, you mentioned that you've got music all over the internet now, and you've got a couple of books that are available. Um, you've got a Facebook page, you told me, called Thoughtful Species. Is that still uh, up and running? Yes, it sure is. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, taking a few rounds out of the anti-vaxxers these days. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'll have to check that out. I've really enjoyed being with, being with you here today. Um, Thanks so I much. love conversation, conversations with people who make me think, and you've definitely made me think. Well, that's very nice of you to say. One of the, one of the ways that, you know, we all want attention, don't we? But, and you, but if I've discovered that, you know, the... Um, the kind of attention we want the most, Jackie, isn't the kind we get when we talk and talk and talk and talk. And I hope I didn't talk too much. I just talk and you know, don't, don't get me started. The kind of attention <laughs> that we want the most, I think, is the kind of attention that we get when we actually pay attention to the other guy. That's one of the things I really liked that I heard on one of your other shows was, you know, go and get in conversations. You don't have to have anything to think about. You don't have to have anything to say. All you have to do is ask the other person what they think. That's it, exactly. Listen, pay attention. If when you pay attention, when we pay attention to others, then they sh show us an appreciation that's better than any that we'll ever get from them by trying to entertain them. <laughs> yeah. Beautifully said. Thanks very much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure for sure. Thanks so much, Jackie. 
And that's it for this episode of Beyond Retirement. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Are you ready to start rocking your retirement? Head on over to www.beyondretirement.ca forward slash rocking it and sign up to plan out your own roadmap for retirement. Don't wait till it's too late. <laughs>